the hour of convening having arrived, all members of the House will please come to the floor and take seats. All members, the clerk will ring the bell. All members will please come to the floor of the House. All members will please come to the floor of the House and take seats. We're about to have the morning roll call. We're about to call the roll. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back for Legislative Day 35. 35. We will have scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 131st House District, Representative Johnny Caldwell. Representative Caldwell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure today to introduce to you my preacher from the First Baptist Church in Thomaston, Georgia, Reverend Bill Barber. Bill is, was born and raised in Tallahassee, and unfortunately, he is an avid FSU fan. And if you walk in his office in Thomaston, he has Bobby Bowden's picture plastered everywhere. And that's the only reason I don't go to confession if we had one <laughs> as Baptist. <laughs> Bill graduated from the uh, North Florida Christian High School in 1977, uh, Gardner Webb College in Bowling Green, North Carolina in 1982 and he has his Master of Divinity degree from the New Orleans Baptist Seminary in 1986. Bill has been a pastor for over 27 years. He's pastored in New York, North Carolina, Texas, and for the past 11 and a half years, as I say, has been the pastor of my home church in Thomaston. Bill also is a high school football official and has been for the past uh, seven years. 
Uh, Bill is married to Michelle. She could not be with us today because she couldn't get off work. Uh, they have two sons, Ben and Zachary, and Zachary is here with us, seated over here. As I say, Bill's hobbies is high school football, college football, and fishing, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you my pastor, Bill Barber. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Caldwell, um, and Ladies and gentlemen of the House, it is my privilege to be with you uh, today. I want to talk for just a few minutes about how do you motivate people. That is that oftentimes we, in leadership positions, find ourselves that we have to motivate people. Oftentimes we have to motivate ourselves. And how do we do that? Sometimes we choose to motivate people through innovative methods. There was a pastor who went to a church, and in his congregation, there was a young man that his heart went out to. The young man was 35 years old. He was greatly overweight. He was depressed. He had never had a date in his life, and he felt like that life was over. The pastor came to this young man, and he said, I've got a foolproof method about how you can lose weight, and what I want you to do is I want you to go to Walmart tonight, buy your jogging suit, and be ready at 8 o'clock in the morning to go running. The 35-year-old man said, sir, pastor, this isn't going to work for me. I've tried everything I know what to do, and, and there's nothing that's going to help me lose weight and get a date. But the man said, you go to Walmart, and you be ready at 8 o'clock in the morning. And so he goes down to Walmart that night. At 8 o'clock in the morning, he has his jogging suit on, and his doorbell rings. And he opens up the door, and he sees the most beautiful woman that he's ever seen in his life. And she looks at him and she says, the pastor said, if you can catch me, you can marry me. And so she starts out running and he goes as fast as he can, huffing and puffing. And after about 500 yards, he's out of gas. That continues for six months. But after six months, that guy has lost 60 pounds. He's a lean, mean, running machine. And the day comes that he knows I'm going to catch the woman of my dreams. He gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning. He puts that jogging suit on. He's ready to go. The doorbell rings and he opens up the door. And to not offend anybody, he sees the ugliest woman he's ever seen in his life. And she says to him, the pastor says, if I can catch you, I can marry you. And last time we saw that guy is still running. So sometimes we try innovative ways to, to motivate people. Sometimes we, we try to motivate people by guilt. As Representative Caldwell said, I went to a Baptist college and uh, Baptists, believe it or not, can steal things. And in our cafeteria, at the front of the cafeteria line, there was always fresh oranges there. And kids would steal more than what they had paid for, and so the manager of the cafeteria put a sign by the oranges and said, Big juicy oranges, take only one, Jesus is watching. But at the end of the line, there was homemade chocolate chip cookies, and one of the students put up a sign that said, Homemade chocolate chip cookies, take as many as you want, Jesus is too busy watching the oranges. And, and so, uh, whether it's innovative ways to motivate people or, or guilt, oftentimes that doesn't work. What is the best way to motivate people? Honestly, God motivates us through a straightforward method. In Psalm 118, verse 24, the Bible says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. What's your favorite day? My favorite day used to be Friday because that's when I got paid. But when they changed my payday to Monday, believe it or not, I like Mondays pretty well. But God's favorite day is today. The Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and, and be glad in it. In that verse, there's three principles we find that, that help us to be motivated to do our best for the Lord. The first thing he tells us in there is that we need to receive each day as a gift from God. It may not look like it, but March the 20th, 2013 is God's gift to you and to me. And what we make of this day will be our gift to God. 
Oftentimes we say that we don't have as much time as we want, that oftentimes we would like more time in the day to do the things that we feel we need to do. But the fact of the matter is, is that you and I do not have all the time we want, but we do have all the time that we need to accomplish what God put us here to do. One of the most profound statements I think found in the scriptures is John chapter 17 verse 4 where Jesus is praying to the heavenly Father and Jesus says, Father, I thank you that I have accomplished everything that you sent me here to do. Jesus was a 33-year-old man when he made that statement. I'm 53 years old and quite honestly, I don't feel like I've even started doing everything that God sent me here to do. How could Jesus make that statement? It was because he received each day as God's gift from him and he made the most of it. If I'm going to be motivated to do all that God wants me to do, I need to receive each day as a gift from God. Second, I need to redeem each day for the glory of God. This is the day the, the Lord has made today. Each one of us has 86,400 seconds, 1,414 minutes, and 24 hours to do something significant for the Lord. Someone has said that life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you want, but you can only spend it one time. What hinders most of us is that we get paralyzed by life. We're paralyzed by the regrets of yesterday and the fears of, and worries of tomorrow, and we do absolutely nothing kind of reminds me of the story of the young man. He's turned 16 years old. He gets his driver's license. He can drive by himself for the first time in his life. He decides to celebrate his birthday. He's going to invite a girl out to go on a date with him. And to his surprise, the young lady says yes. His dad lets him borrow the keys to his dad's car, brand new Cadillac, and he takes that young girl out for a great night on the town. They go to the movies, they have a romantic dinner at Burger King, and then when he takes her home, he decides, I might as well go for it all, and he looks at this, this lady, this young girl, and he says, can I kiss you? And she doesn't respond. He, he remembers from English class, it's not can I kiss you, it's may I kiss you. Maybe she's hung up on the English language, and so he looks at this young girl, and he says, may I kiss you? She still doesn't say anything, and he finally says, are you deaf? And she says, no, are you paralyzed? And, and so oftentimes that happens to us in life. I have regrets about what I did yesterday. I worry about tomorrow, and so oftentimes I, I don't do anything. How do I overcome that? I'm thankful today to tell you that Jesus Christ takes care of our past through his cross and through hope and faith in him, he helps me with my future that I can trust him with every concern that I have. How, do I, how am I to be motivated today to do my best for the Lord? I need to receive each day as a gift from God. I need to redeem each day for the glory of God. Finally, I need to rejoice each day in the goodness of God. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. My wife tells me a lot, you won't believe this, but she says, Bill, you're awful grumpy. And when she tells me I'm grumpy, I have a list of excuses of why I am grumpy. It's my church's fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my kid's fault. It's the weather's fault. But I come to this scripture and I'm reminded that if Bill Barber's grumpy, there's only one person to blame and that's me. Do you realize that joy is a choice? If you're miserable today, if you're grumpy today, the bad news I've got for you is your own fault. He says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The late Zig Ziglar that went around the country giving that positive message tells the story about when he was in Birmingham, Alabama one night. He spoke to a large crowd and and, and after he spoke, as usual, people would come down and talk to him. And at the end of the line, was a miserable looking woman. I mean, you could tell by her countenance that she was just mad at the world and mad at life. He says to her, ma'am, what is your problem? And, and she says, it's, it's my job and it's the people I work with. She says, I work with the worst people in the world. I have the worst job in the world. I don't like anything about my job and I'm gonna go back tomorrow and I'm just gonna quit. 
He said to her, you don't like anything about your job? She says, absolutely nothing. He says, do they pay you at your job? And she says, yes, they do pay me to work. And as a matter of fact, they pay me a pretty good salary. He said, do you like that? She said, I do. And so he took out a pen and a piece of paper and he wrote down, uh, they pay me at my job. He says, ma'am, do they give you a vacation at your job? And she says, they, they give me three weeks of paid vacation. Do you like that? She says, I do. He says, write it down. In about 10 minutes, she had 17 things that she liked about her job. He says, what I want you to do is every morning you get up and every time you go to bed at night, I want you to read that list of 17 things you like about your job. Six months later, he was back in Birmingham, Alabama, and that same lady was back, but this time she didn't have a scowl on her face. She had a smile that lit up the room. She stands at the end of the line to speak to the great Zig Ziglar. It becomes her time to speak, and he says, ma'am, I hardly even recognize you. You're, you're so happy and joyful. What happened? She said, you won't believe it. All those people that I work with have changed. They're different. <laughs> it wasn't them that had changed at all, but it was her. I'm going to make the most of this day. I need to rejoice. So remember today, as you live life and as you try to motivate others, you receive today as God's gift to you. You redeem this day for the glory of God. Take these 24 hours and do something that will honor and glorify Him. And then rejoice each day in God's goodness to you. I'll conclude with this story. There was a first grade teacher. She had started her job. She asked her students. She said, um, What's, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Somebody said, I want to be an astronaut. Some said you know, football player, doctor, nurse, typical answers. And she gets to Johnny and she says, Johnny, what do you want to be when you grow up? And Johnny says, I want to be possible. <laughs> she said, possible? What do you mean? He says, 15 times a day, my mama tells me I'm impossible. One day, I want to be possible. <laughs> my prayer for you, my prayer for me today is that we will be possible. That the people that God created us to be, that he will make us to be that through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we do thank you for this day that you have made and that you have given us the privilege to be able to enjoy it. And I pray that we would receive this day as your gift to us, that we would make the most of this day to glorify you, and most of all, that we would re rejoice in your goodness to us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the gift of eternal life that he gives us. I thank you for each person in this place today. Help them to know that they are specially created by you and loved by you. And I pray that your blessings, your help, your wisdom, and your guidance and your grace would be upon all in this place today. Be glorified and honored in what we do, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Sims, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journals of the previous legislative day and found that they are correct. Chairman Sims, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. O'Neill, the 146 minutes of following be established as the order of business in the first part of the period of unanimous consent. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First ring of reference of bills and resolutions. Second ring of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third ring of passage. Uncontested local bills. Morning orders. Rules calendar. Privilege resolutions. Through the re resolution establishing order of business for this day. Hey, Jason. We'll take care of you, Pop. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 608, Representative Houston 170th, Bill being Title Act to men Title 31 relating to health. Health and Human Services. <clears throat> House Bill 609, Representative Rogers 10th, Bill being Title Act. New Charter, City of Demarest. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 610, Representative Williamson, 115th, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Title 33, Link to Insurance. Insurance. House Bill 611, Representative Huey, 136th, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Title 31, General Provisions Link to Health. Health and Human Services. House Bill 612, Representative Chapman, 167, Bill of Entitled Act, Relating to Brunswick, Glen County Development Authority. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 613, Representative Henson 86, Bill Ben Tylack authorizing the Cab County to levy an excise tax. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 614, Representative Jacobs 80th, Bill Ben Tylack, Men Act unincorporated the Cab County. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 615, Representative Alexander 66, Bill Ben Tylack, Green Board of Elections, Douglas County. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 616, Representative Morris 156, Bill Ben Tylack, New Charter City Alliance. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 617, Representative Marin of the 96th, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Title 48, Imposition Rate Computation Equal. Ways and Means. House Bill 618, Representative Drennan of the 85th, Bill of Entitled Act, Relating to General Provisions Relative to Agriculture. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 619, Representative Oliver of the 82nd, Bill of Entitled Act, New Charter City of Sham. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 620, Representative Rice, 95th, Bill of Entitled Act, Authorized City of Peachtree Corners, the Redevelopment. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 621, Representative Powell, 32nd, Bill of Entitled Act, Men Title 40, Lane to Restoration Drivers. Motor Office. Vehicles. House Bill 622, Representative Green, 151st, Bill of Entitled Act, Reconstituted Board of Education, Quitman County. Intergovernmental Coordination. 
House Resolution, House Resolution 739 by Representative Jasper Levin, a resolution dedicating pathway to the Smokies. Transportation. House Resolution 740 by Representative Dahl, the 45th, a resolution creating House Study Committee on Economic Impact, Renewable Economic Energy. Development and Tourism. House Resolution 741 by Representative Mayor, the 96th, resolution requests the Supreme Court to affirm the Constitution and the Voting Rights Act. Senate Bill, Senate Bill 249 by Senator Beach, 21st, Bill of the Entire Act, Bill Act creating new charter city of Holly Springs. Intergovernmental coordination. Through the first reader. Second reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. What you got, Colonel? HB 603 by Representative Evans of the 42nd, a bill to amend an act creating state court of Cobb County. HB 604 by Representative Jones of the 47th, a bill to amend an act providing for the Determination of millage rates by governing authorities in Fulton County, HB 605 by Representative Neal of the 2nd, a bill relating to regulation of controlled substances, HB 606 by Representative Knight of the 130th, a bill relating to private home care providers, HB 607 by Representative Waits of the 60th, a bill relating to water suppliers cut off of water to premises because of indebtedness of prior owner, occupant, or lessee prohibited records required, limited liens for unpaid charges for water, gas, sewer, and services, or electricity, through second readers. Reports of standing committees, the clerk will read. Representative Sims, 169, Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination has had consideration of the following bills of the House, directly report the same act, House, following recommendations. House Bill 568, 571, 572, 577, 583, 584, 585, 586, 587, 588, 592, 597, 600, 602, do pass, respect submitted. Representative Sims, Chair, Representative Powell, 32nd. Chairman Committee on Public Safety, Homeland Security, submit the following report. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Public Safety, Homeland Security has had under consideration following bills of the Senate. Truck may report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. Senate Bill 23, do pass. Senate Bill 101, do pass by way of committee substitute. Respect submitted, Representative Powell. Chairman, through the committee reports. We're about to go on to the local calendar. We're about to go on to the local calendar. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 568, Representative Reinders, 152nd, Worth County. House Bill 571, Representative Peak, 141st, Bibb County. House Bill 572, Representative Hardin, 148th, Wilcox County. House Bill 577, Representative Hardin, 148th, Wilcox County. House Bill 583, Representative Knight, 130th, Spalding County. House Bill 584, Representative Rogers, 10th, White County. House Bill 585, Representative Jackson, 128th, Washington County, House Bill 586, Representative Black, 174th, Camden County, House Bill 587, Representative Bentley, 139th, Dooley County, House Bill 588, Representative Parsons, 44th, Cobb County, House Bill 592, Representative Nimmer, 178, Pierce County, House Bill 597, Representative Pruitt, 149, Telfair Wheeler Counties, House Bill 600 by Representative Powell, 171st, Decatur County, House Bill 602 by Representative Chokas, 138th, Sumter County, Four going local bills have been before the House Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination. The committee recommends these bills do pass. Bills are being read today for the third time through the local calendar. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the bills on the local calendar now pass all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote yes, all those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted?
If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 144. The nays are zero. These bills, having received the requisite constitutional majority, are therefore passed. We're going on to morning orders. All right, the House will be in order. House will come to order. Chair is going to ask that all members in the chamber return to their seats, cease conversation. We've got a lot of traffic in every aisle and a lot of noise. And we have members who have signed up for morning orders. The chair is going to ask that you give respect and attention to the members in the well. Chair recognizes Representative Williams for a morning order. Representative Al Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wow, thank you. That's the first time I ever ran from a mic. It, it gives me great honor to honor a great Atlantan and a great Georgian who just happens to be my barber. But that's not why he's a great Georgian. He's a great Georgian because he owns the second oldest business on Edgewood Avenue. He's a great Georgian because it's been a gathering place for so many years in the Auburn Avenue community. He's a great Georgian because he cut the hair of both Daddy King, Martin Luther King Sr., and also Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is a place that has inspired many. He came here from Sandersville, Georgia. That's why I've asked Representative Mag Jackson to accompany me, and Representative Simone Bell is his representative where his business is. I would like for us to honor this great Georgian who has had a license to practice barbary since 1969, but he's been cutting hair since he was 16 years old. He's the youngest 86-year-old man I know. Let us welcome Mr. Leslie Jordan. We thank you so much. Thank you for being here, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Tom Taylor for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, today is a Code Enforcement Day at the Capitol. Uh, we've got the uh, Board of Directors of the Georgia Association of Code Enforcement here. They have a booth down in the South Lobby. If you'd stop by some time during the, their session today to uh, talk with these folks. These are the folks that go out there every day in the communities, uh, look for electrical problems, do inspections, you know, just a plethora of things that, uh, uh, quality of life issues that these folks provide to us. I'd like to, they got the Board of Directors up in the gallery. I'd like you to stand and be recognized, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Epps for a morning order. Representative Bubber Epps. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Randall is going to join me as we are. Dick as well. Thank you. We're glad to have the discovery class with us this morning from Titan Square Academy in Macon visiting us uh, here at the Capitol. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome this group. We can get them to stand. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a granddaughter, Mr. Speaker, in this, this part of this class, Kenna Epps. And, uh, They're accompanied by their teacher, Ms. Karen Swan. We welcome you to our capital and thank them for coming. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Kirby for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, the year of academic and athletic excellence in Loganville and Walton County continues. And this morning, we are honored to have the uh, members of the uh, GISA AAA state championship basketball team, the Loganville Christian Academy Lions with us. If you would, gentlemen, stand and, and allow the members of the House to recognize you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Chair recognizes Chairman Chuck Martin for a morning order. Chairman Martin. Just a minute, Mr. Chairman. We'll go at any pace y'all choose to go at, but we're going to go with order and dignity in this house. Gentlemen may proceed. Chairman is joined by Chairman Pruitt and Representative Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we stand before you today, uh, I do, along with my colleagues, to recognize some special people. As you will recall, earlier this session, this House passed Representative Chairman Pruitt's Return to Play Act, and in so doing, we recognize the need to focus on the health of our athletes in Georgia, both young and old. Today, I ask you to join us as we recognize a private sector community partnership that recognized the need and acted before House Bill 284 was passed, and they did so in the absolute best interest of the Georgia's youth. Sports Care Connect, using a generous contribution and financial support from state bank and trust, provided concussion insurance to every, every participant in the North Metro Football League this past session, looking after our young athletes. They're in the gallery with us. If I could ask them to stand and ask the members of the House to please join me and my colleagues in recognizing and commending Sports Care Connect, State Bank and Trust, and the North Metro Football League for taking care of the youth in our community. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes what appears to be the Coweta County delegation. Chairman Smith, Representative Ramsey, Representative Epps, and Representative Stover for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm standing here with the Coweta County delegation to recognize Dr. Bob Hamberlin. Uh, Dr. Hamberlin, if you'd please stand. Dr. Hamberlin is the 2012 Distinguished Educator Award winner uh, from the Association of Middle Level Education. Uh, additionally, in 2011, Dr. Hamberlin was named the, middle, the National Middle Level Distinguished Principal of the Year, and as you see, the Georgia Association of Educational Leaders Outstanding Educator Award, as well as the Georgia Association of Middle School Principals Dr. John Lousbury Award, just to name a few. Let's give recognition to Dr. <clears throat> Hamberlin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you. Good job. Chair recognizes Representative Carson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues in the House, today is Boy Scout Day at the Capitol. Boy Scouting. As you know, it's a fantastic organization, teaches leadership, accountability, and discipline at an early age. I myself uh, am an Eagle Scout. Sometimes I trip up and say was an Eagle Scout, but it was many years ago. We have a number of uh, Boy Scouts uh, with us today at the Capitol. We have about 10 troops. Mr. Speaker, I'm not going to read them all, but if I can read some of the cities, Powder Springs, Griffin, Johns Creek, Byron, Alpharetta, Villa Rica, Douglasville, Jasper, Grayson, Ellenwood, Roswell, four troops from Atlanta and then my home areas of uh, Woodstock and Marietta. Thank you, Representative, and again, welcome you all uh, for the parents and volunteers. Thank you for your service, uh, for the sacrifice, sacrifice uh, the service you've been giving to the boys. They lie to us when they say two hours a week, uh, but we love it. Uh, and for the boys, just stay on the trail, uh, trail to Eagle Scout. Thank you very much. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, for for 10 years, I I started and initiated and ran the Boy Scout Day uh, with uh, Representative Marin, and then now uh, Eagle Scout Representative Carson has taken that over. I appreciate that. Uh, I look forward to continuing a uh, a long tradition here with many of you in this in this house have either been. Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, many of the women in the house have been cub leaders and, and, and den mothers and that type of thing. And it's, it's been a great tradition. Take some time today to meet some of these young men. They're, they're, they're fine, young citizens of the state of Georgia, and I recommend them to you. Thank you very much. 
boys in the gallery, will you stand up, um, uh, Boy Scouts that are here today, could you give them a round of applause? Right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, we have a couple more morning orders that we're having to wait on. So we're going to recognize some distinguished Georgians that are visiting with us here today. The chair recognizes Representative Bubber Epps for an invite resolution. Representative Epps. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure this morning to, uh, to introduce uh, to you uh, uh, kind of a familiar face. We've had Dr. Jeter and his, his team here before, but uh, this is the state champion Class A Wilson County boys basketball team. The only team in the state uh, to win the state championship six times since 1999. Uh, they're, they're a tremendous group of athletes. Dr. Jeter does an exceptional job of not only molding their athletic skills, but their character and their integrity and their principles. He is, he is certainly a guardian of the youth and uh, his excellence uh, in, in his programs describe it. And uh, our, our resolution that we're presenting to him acknowledges his accomplishments and achievements. And I thank the speaker in this house for allowing us the opportunity to showcase. And uh, this time I present the rest of our team there in the gallery, if they'll stand up. Dr. Jeter will uh, help us recognize them. The Wilson County High School Boys State Champion, Dr. Jeter. Thank you so much. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Epps in the house, we want to say thank you for allowing us to come from Irwinton, Georgia. This morning I bring greetings from the Wilkinson County Board of Education and our chairman, Ms. Marjo Bazin. With that being said, we welcome all of you at any time to please come to our county and bless us with some tax money <laughs> so that we can take care of our educational needs there. But again, thank you for allowing us to come this morning and congratulations to the Wilkinson County Warriors, better known as the Blue Storm. Thank you. House will be in order. The House will be in order. Chair recognizes Chairman Calvin Hill for a morning order. Chairman Hill, he's joined by Representative Ballinger, Representative Caldwell, Representative Turner, and Carson. <laughs> Again. Last but not least. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, no community can really succeed without a strong Chamber of Commerce. And in Cherokee County, we're very fortunate to have one of the best, if not the best, in the state where the, the metro meets the mountains is our slogan, and it really is. Cherokee County takes us from the metro into the farmlands and rolling hills of North Georgia, and I would like to introduce Ms. Pam Carnes, the president of the Cherokee County Chamber, the Chamber Board of Directors, and many of the members of the Chamber Government Affairs Committee from Cherokee County. If you would stand, please, in the gallery. Okay. And Ben Looper? I know that you're over there. The others have had to leave, I'm afraid. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Alicia Thomas Morgan for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, members of the House. I am elated today uh, to recognize some very special guests that we have visiting us. I think the best looking group we've had all session long. It's a group of young professionals from around the metro Atlanta area and then as far as way as Fitzgerald, Georgia. So with the, those participants for Young Professionals Day, please stand so that we can recognize you. We welcome you to your state capitol and thank you for being here today. And we're excited to have them here today. They've already heard from Attorney General Sam Olins. They'll hear later from Justice Melton. And you have a great day planned for you. So welcome and thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair, Chair recognizes Representative Abel Mabel Thomas for an invite resolution. Representative Thomas. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members of this distinguished body, it is an honor for me to have such distinguished guests with us today. If you would, I would like to introduce the persons that are with me today. Uh, we have our honoree, Mr. Charlie Smith. We have his wife, Ms. Desiree Smith. We have the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club of Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, Ms. Leisha Smith. We have uh, Quiana. Uh, Watkins, the daughter of Mr. Smith and Desiree. We have Mr. Vincent Jones, and we have Ms. Patrice Holt. I am very, very honored today to be able to present such a distinguished Georgian, and I'm also very honored to be able to say that the Boys and Girls Clubs of America is one of the greatest institutions in America that serves our youth. The Boys and Girls Clubs of America, a safe place a learning place, a fun place, a place where I got my beginnings. I would like to say to you that the honoree, Mr. Charlie Smith, is someone when I was a young adult and attending the Boys and Girls Club in my neighborhood, he was a, a strong mentor and force for me to guide me on the way. And I got a lot of experience at the Boys and Girls Club and continue to work with the Boys and Girls Club in my local community. So the person that will come to you after the resolution is read is a God-fearing man, a kind and hardworking man, one who nurtures, loves, and respects our children. I am glad to be a part of the Boys and Girls Club movement. And at this time, I'd like the clerk to read the resolution. House Resolution 78 by Representative Thomas, 56 and others, a resolution recognizing and commending Mr. Charlie L. Smith, Jr., inviting him to be recognized by the House of Representatives at a date and upon a time to be designated by the Speaker of the House. Okay. I would like to um, ask Mr. Smith if you would have the words to this, this body. Thank you. Uh, to, Mr. Speak, uh, to Mr. Speaker, uh, to all of the state representatives, especially to uh, State Representative Abel Mabel Thomas. Uh, I just want to just say thank you. It's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be uh, selected uh, for my many years of service. But I just want to just to say that, you know, I'm just like uh, a frog that you might see going down the road and you see a frog sitting on the fence and you wonder, how did that frog get up on the fence? Well, someone had to help that frog get up there on the fence. And I have many giants that came before me that led the way for me to be here. And I give them all of the thanks uh, for me being here. And again, uh, the people that you see before me uh, is one of the reasons why I'm here. And I'm so thankful for them. And I'm so thankful for uh, Abel Mabel. Uh, it, it's a funny thing that when she was at the age of 16, 
she did her first citizenship boys, uh, in the Boys and Girls Club. And believe it or not, that that's how she got started in politics. And I want to say that I was always taught to never give up. The leaders never gave up on me when I was coming up as a youth. And one thing that I committed myself to do, that I would not give up on our youth. And so I'm not what I ought to be, but I will, I'm not what I'm ought to be uh, until the kids be what they should be. So my work is not over. So thank you so much uh, for that presentation. Yeah, appreciate it. I, I just want to say you know, he's been in Boys and Girls Club of America for 42 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Rogers for an invite resolution. Chairman Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, it gives me great pleasure to recognize the Gainesville High School Mighty Red Elephants who wore out Ware County and the 5A championship in December. I had the pleasure of being there. And at this time, I'm going to ask the players in the gallery, please stand up and let's recognize them, please. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Clark, will you read the resolution, please? House Resolution 490 by Representative Rogers, 28th and others, 29th and others. A resolution congratulating the Gainesville High School Red Elephants football team on their 2012 Class 5A state championship win, inviting them to the Gainesville High School football team coaches, cheerleading team, and administration to be recognized by this House of Representatives at a date and time to be designated by the Speaker of this House. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to recognize the head football coach of Gainesville High School. If you'll please welcome Coach Bruce Miller. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Gainesville started football in 1905, and this is the first state championship they've won in football uh, since 1905, and we're so thankful. Thank you so much for having us here, and we represent the only red elephants in the whole nation, the red elephants of Gainesville, Georgia. In addition, uh, last year our ladies golf team and men's golf team won their state championship, so that makes us very proud as well. And believe it or not, the basketball team almost won the state championship, and many of the players are up in the gallery. We only missed it by, what, four points. So anyway, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Chair recognizes Representative Frazier for a morning order. Representative Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. She's going to be joined by Representative Murphy. Thank you. We are so very honored today to have here with us our group from the AARP, from the Augusta chapter. They are here today uh, and would like for you all to stand up and be recognized in your house. Let's give them a hand. Our residents from Augusta, Georgia. Chair recognizes Representative Oliver, Representative Mary Margaret Oliver for a morning order. This house will be in order. We're recognizing and honoring distinguished guests that are visiting with us. The meetings and traffic around the uh, aisles, please return to your seats. If those meetings are that important, you can take them out to the ante room. Representative Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Gloria Frazier and I today are very happy to recognize the 900 volunteers that went from Georgia to the Northeast Georgia, to Northeast United States, to help the victims of Hurricane Sandy. And I ask the clerk at this time uh, to read resolution. House Resolution 526. By Representative Oliver of the 82nd and many others, a resolution recognizing and commending Lyman from Georgia Power and the International Brotherhood of Electoral Workers, Local 84, members of the Georgia AFL CIO, for their diligence in responding to the needs of individuals in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy and for other purposes. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. When I was a, a young lawyer in North Georgia, there was a tornado that came through North Georgia and killed six people in Dawson County. I was assigned to work for uh, the Red Cross as a volunteer for a week. 
And that made me um, very aware and gave me deep understanding of the sacrifices that volunteers make when storms and tragedies hit our communities. I was not doing anything dangerous in my volunteer work. I was able to go home every night to my home. But the 900 Georgians, mostly Georgia power workers, mostly union workers, that went to the Northeast United States, left their families for weeks at a time. They left their communities for weeks at a time and months at a time to serve the needs of citizens in the rest of the United States. We are here today personally to recognize Scott Holland from Milledgeville and Jose Hurtado from Dalton. But both those individuals, as I speak, are in Alabama right now, serving the needs of the storm victims there today. So with us instead is Charlie Fleming, president of the Georgia AFL-CIO, and Ronnie Chester from the Local 84. Thank you, gentlemen, for your hundreds and hundreds of hours of volunteer service for needy Americans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, we want to, from the Georgia AFL-CIO, we certainly would like to thank Representative Oliver, uh, and we want to congratulate all those workers who, uh, for the work they do every day, uh, and, and especially in times of uh, disaster. Uh, a lot of times they, they don't get recognized, but as uh, Representative said, they leave their families, they, they work under harsh uh, uh, conditions, uh, to try to help uh, other folks put their, their lives back together. So we, we're, we're extremely excited and appreciative that uh, with this resolution because I think it's well-deserved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Watson to introduce the Doctor of the Day, Representative Ben Watson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my privilege here to introduce the Doctor of the Day, Dr. Thaddeus Lynn, a native of Atlanta. Uh, he's board certified in uh, family practice. So he's one of those physicians that uh, you'll hear me tout uh, many times as a uh, primary care physician. I'm sure he knows what I mean when I say a patient-centered uh, medical home uh, and when we're talking about uh, driving quality uh, of health care. Uh, Dr. Lynn uh, attended Ohio State University and uh, did his internal medicine uh, internship in Cincinnati and serves as a private practitioner here uh, at Paces Ferry Medical Group uh, here in Buckhead in Metro Atlanta. I uh, was a member of the American Academy of Family Physicians and Atlanta Medical Association, uh, Dr. Thaddeus Lynn. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. I am Dr. Thaddeus K. Lynn, a private practitioner at the Paces Ferry Medical Group located in Buckhead area of metropolitan Atlanta. I would like to thank the legislators of the House Chamber for their hard work and service to the great state of Georgia. The physicians of Georgia care about our patients and also appreciate the efforts of our state legislature to ensure that a system of quality health care in Georgia is preserved and strengthened. According to the American uh, Heart Association, the estimated cost of stroke in the United States in 2010 was $74 billion. Through wellness and preventative care, we can prevent or reduce hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and diabetes 
By doing so, a significant number of life-threatening cardiovascular events, such as stroke, heart attacks, and congestive heart failure, can be greatly reduced. Through wellness and preventative care, both morbidity and mortality can be reduced, giving residents of Georgia improved quality of life. I stand with you in a strong effort to promote wellness and preventative care for all Georgians as you unselfishly give of yourselves to govern the great state of Georgia, where everything that is good is indeed possible. Thank you. Members will return to their seats. All members will return to their seats. We are going on to the rules calendar. Going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 120. Senate Bill 120. Senate Bill 120 by Senator Crosby, 13th. The bill will be entitled Act Men Title 15, laying probate courts will provide for prosecuting attorneys in probate courts in counties where there is no state court. This bill having been for the House Committee on Judiciary, the committee recommends the bill passed by committee substitute. The bill is being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes Representative Fleming to present the bill. Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring to you today Senate Bill 120. This is a bill which simply provides to make sure that we will have solicitors in probate courts across our state, particularly in the smaller counties. Uh, many of the probate courts in our state still handle traffic matters. Uh, and where there is not a state court, uh, there is not a solicitor, unless the DA provides one or the local county government does that. Quite often to keep the local probate judge from having to be prosecutor and judge and jury, um, a county under this legislation can now step in with the approval of the district attorney and actually hire a solicitor uh, to handle some of these um, sometimes complicated matters that rise up uh, in uh, probate courts, uh, in traffic court situations. Mr. Speaker, that's basically what the bill does. It's very similar to what the House did, uh, the, the legislature did rather, a, um, a year or so ago when we allowed the same thing to occur in our municipal courts. Mr. Speaker, unless there are any questions which I'd be happy to take, I would ask for favorable consideration of Senate Bill 120. You have some questions if you care to yield. Absolutely, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes uh, the Chairman of the Transportation Committee, Chairman Roberts, to your right. Gentlemen, yield. Yes, sir, I will. Actually, a friendly question. Actually, a friendly question. This bill is not requiring that we have a solicitor, correct? Absolutely not, Mr. Chairman. Good question. This is simply a may. They can if, if, they, uh, if they need to. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good question. Chair, uh, you, you for another question? Absolutely, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Welch to your left for a question. The gentleman in the, in the well yield. Yes, sir. Representative, does the bill uh, mandate any funding by local governments for these positions, or is that option is that option uh, if, available? Uh, good question, Representative Welch. Once again, only if the county wants to have a solicitor there in agreement with the probate court and the DA do they have to fund it. It's not mandatory. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Speaker, unless there are any further questions. You have no further questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd ask for your favorable consideration of Senate Bill 120. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of Senate Bill 120 will vote yes. All those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of Senate Bill 120. The ayes are 152. The nays are one. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 212. Senate Bill 212. Senate Bill 212 by Senator Mullis, the 53rd. It will be entitled, I've been entitled 20, relating to competencies, core curriculum, so as to require schools to provide training in cardiopulmonary resuscitation and the use of external defibrillators for students in grades 7 through 12. Bill has been for the House Committee on Education. The committee recommends this bill pass by do pass. The bill is being read today for the third time. Thank you, sweet. Chair recognizes Representative Diefenbaugh to present the bill. Good morning. Today I am presenting Senate Bill 212 for the House's consideration. This bill has no cost attached to it and only requires a 30-minute time slot between the 9th and 12th grade to be completed. This bill will require a student to view a 30-minute CPR AED video that can be downloaded from the Internet. This bill proposed is only an overview of the CPR and AED process. We want to train tomorrow's adults to be basic life skill savers for the future. There is no certification required with this bill that's placed on the schools in any way. They can, if they wish, have some EMCs uh, or have some uh, firemen or other certified members teach the class. That could either be volunteer or pay at their discretion. And I thank you for your considering positive consideration for House or Senate Bill 212. And if there are any questions, I will try to answer them. And if not, I will yield the well. You have a couple of questions if you care to yield. I will yield, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Taylor to your right for a question. Gentlemen, you're for a question? I will yield for a question. Is it, is it not true that this Senate bill is your first bill on the House floor? Um, <laughs> could I take the fifth? <laughs> yes, yes no. it is. Thank yes, you. it is. Thank you. Do you yield for another question? Yes, sir. Chair recognizes the Majority Caucus Whip, Representative Lindsay, to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. Congratulations on your first bill. Thank I'm just you. sort of wondering about this uh, course. Uh, have you ever taken the course? I have taken the course several times. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been the, the dummy who, who... Yes, I have. <laughs> have you... And, 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 and continue on occasion. <laughs> and uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You have no further questions. And, sir, I yield the well with a... Well, I had one. Did you say that you took the fifth or wanted a fifth? I didn't... <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't pick up on that. Either. <laughs> no further questions. 
Thank you for your positive consideration for Senate Bill 212, and uh, I yield the will. Gentlemen, has yielded the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of Senate Bill 212 will vote yes. All those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of Senate Bill 212. The ayes are 140, the nays are 21. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 529. House Resolution 529. House Resolution 529, members in Harbin, 122nd. Resolution creating the House Georgia Music Industry Study Committee. This resolution had been before the House Committee on Economic Development and Tourism. The committee recommends the bill do pass. Resolution is being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes Representative Harbin to present the bill. Representative Harbin. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I come before you today, ladies and gentlemen of the House, with House Resolution 529. Uh, this is a simple little proposition trying to create the Georgia or the House Georgia Music Industry Study Committee. But I believe it can have a tremendous impact on the future of Georgia, not just in our music industry, but our economic development as well. What we've seen over the past several years is a rapidly changing music industry. And it, as it has changed, other states have become more competitive with us. Today, Georgia's music industry has about a, a little over $3 billion impact in Georgia today. But we are seeing changes and other states are growing and prospering. And we've seen some of our talent, which we have been blessed with. Georgia has a tremendous amount of talent that has come out of our great state. From uh, whispering Bill Anderson, some of you might remember, to Zach Brown today to one of my favorites from my district, Lady Antebellum. Or if you'll remember Otis Redding, James Brown from the Augusta area, to Ludacris. We've been blessed, and those are our ambassadors. And those ambassadors help us to talk about and promote our music industry. But what we need to do is as those ambassadors are beginning to gain notoriety, international notoriety, we need to make sure they're still here producing that music and not running off to other states and producing because those other states have become so competitive. So what we've done with this resolution is we're asking you to help us so that we can spend this interim studying, studying the music industry, talking to those people in the industry, from the musicians to the producers, to everyone. We've got Lisa Love, who is a director of music marketing and development. And Lisa, I believe, is in the, is in the gallery, if y'all would please recognize her. She has done a tremendous job. Lisa has done a tremendous job with the music industry. And, but what we want to do is spend this interim, spend this summer, trying to figure out what can we do to make sure that Georgia is in the best position it can be to grow those permanent jobs here in Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Mr. Speaker, I will yield for questions if there are any. If there aren't, I ask for your favorable consideration to House Resolution 529. You have no questions. The gentleman has yielded the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Oh, we have one to speak on the bill. I'm sorry, forgot that. Chair recognizes Representative Kaiser to speak on the bill.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For many of you in this chamber, you'll remember uh, in 2008 when Amy Carter brought us the music of Third Day from Alpharetta, Georgia. Representative Jay Neal introduced us to Lauren Elena, an American Idol runner-up, and Representative Gloria Frazier brought us, make sure I get this right, Elena Brown, um, and does not let us forget that James Brown heralds from her city of Augusta. Many of you will also remember that we honored some of Atlanta's local talent driving and crying on their 25th anniversary. Our speaker was gracious enough to let Kevin Kinney sing a song, and he sang beautifully, I See Georgia. Their band's manager, Kenneth Green, says, I've been involved in the music business in Georgia since 1995 as a musician, studio owner, producer, agent, and currently manager for several Georgia-based artists, including Driving and Crying, Angie Aparo, members of Collective Soul, Delta Moon, and more. During this time, I've seen the Georgia music business infrastructure erode dramatically due to many factors, not the least of which is the lack of encouragement and the support to the establishment and continuing growth of the industry. We start tours in New Orleans because of their tax incentives, and we record in Nashville because of their infrastructure. Encourage us to keep the business here in Georgia by supporting H.R. 529. It's essential to a prosperous future for the music industry in Georgia. My own hometown of Athens, Georgia, has produced the likes of the B-52s and REM. Quoting the mayor of this music mecca, it is time we recognize our artists for the economic value they bring to our communities as well as the joy they add to our lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You have no questions. Lady is yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none, the previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing with the report of the committee, which was favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this resolution now be adopted? All those in favor of the adoption of the resolution will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the adoption of the resolution, the ayes are 157, the nays are five. This resolution, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore adopted. Clerk will read the caption to Senate Bill 136. Senate Bill 136. Senate Bill 136 by Senator Miller of the 49th. Bill being titled Act, being titled 27, Chapter 7, relating game and fish as to registration, operation, sale of watercraft, respectfully so as to provide greater public protection for hunting and boating. Provide for related matters. This bill has been for the House Committee on Game, Fish, and Parks. The committee recommends the bill to pass by committee substitute. Bill is being read today for the third time. G Talk. Chair recognizes the governor's floor leader, 
Leader Nimmer to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. I come before you this morning to uh, bring for your consideration Senate Bill 136. I want to bring your attention to the fact that we have some visitors in the gallery who are tied to this bill in more ways than just legislative matters. They are tied to this bill with the matters of loved ones who have lost their life Let them go on. under the uh, what I would consider current loose regulations that we have worked collaboratively with in this body, with the other chamber in the Senate, with the appropriate agencies in the state to tighten up some of our rules and regs regarding boating under the influence and hunting under the influence in the state of Georgia. Senate Bill 136 addresses many things. I want to touch on them if I may. Under the issue of boating under the influence, I want you to know that Georgia is one of eight states in the country with a blood alcohol concentration limit for boating under the influence of 0 0.10. That is higher than that of driving under the influence, which is at 0 0.08. The U.S. Coast Guard shows that alcohol is a contributing factor to over 50% of boating fatalities each year in our nation. With the rising draw of our recreational waterways and lakes in this great state that we have the privilege of serving, we have a responsibility to look at these current laws and tighten them up so that we give the best protection to those that choose to recreate on our water. This bill moves that limit to 0 .08 for boating under the influence. It also tightens up those under vessel operations the existing statute regarding what type of vessels individuals under the age of 16 may operate is unnecessarily complicated. And what this bill does is propose a way to streamline and identify who is certified and qualified and properly educated to operate a vessel in these waterways which we enjoy. The education will be a phase-in requirement for all individuals. Now, I want you to listen and understand that we are going to require all motorized vessel operators born on or after, that is born on or after January the 1st of 1998 to complete a boater safety education course. Now, this is a free course. It will not cost any of the recreational people who enjoy these waterways a dime. It will not cost the state a dime. It will not cost the vendors who are providing this course a dime. It is offered currently online on the DNR's website. We're simply saying that if you're going to go out and enjoy these waterways and embark in boating activities, you need to be educated, you need to understand the dangers that are out there, and you need to be qualified to operate a vessel. The bill goes on and covers many other issues dealing with renting. Uh, unlike many of us who had the privilege to grow up in the rural parts of the state and enjoy water activities, we have a lot of people in their later stages in life who want to take their families out to a lake or to a river, rent a boat while they're on vacation. And when they do that, there's a 12-minute video that is offered. You can take that course and watch that video, print off your proof of certification there at your home, at the hotel you're staying at, or at the place where you would rent a boat. It is simply a 12-minute course stating that you understand and have learned some of the possible dangers, if you will, that could in, you could encounter out on the water. States who have already implemented mandatory boating education have shown an overall decrease in the number of fatalities per 100,000 registered boaters. And folks, that's what this bill's intent is, is to reduce the number of fatalities that we have in this state when people take the waterways. Boating under the influence is, a, is an issue that is addressed. Boater education is an issue that is addressed. We also, and I've heard some concerns with this next portion, dealing with life jackets. 
we're moving the requirement up to under the age of 13, that is through the age of 12, you're going to be required to wear a life jacket while a boat is in motion. A boat with a motorized unit on it is in motion. You must wear a life jacket if you are 12 years old or younger. Now I've been asked, what if you take your family out on the lake to watch the fireworks show on the 4th of July? When you go out onto that lake and you switch that boat off, if you have children on the boat under the age of 12, they can remove the life jacket at that time. If you dock up to go fishing and the boat is not being propelled by a motor, you can remove the life jacket at that time. But while that boat is in motion, while that boat is being powered by a power unit, if you are 12 years old or younger, you're going to be required to wear a life jacket. It goes on to update the regulation for navigation lights on vessels, and it just puts us in, in uh, accordance with the U.S. Coast Guard's recommendation. And then we also address hunting under the influence in this bill. Hunting, as well as water recreation, is a big pastime, a big economic driver for this state. And it is our belief and my belief that you should have the same rules for hunting under the influence that you do for boating and driving under the influence. That is at a .08 blood alcohol content. We're going to move that from .10 to .08. Mr. Speaker, I know in this bill there's going to be some questions, and I'm going to do my very best to answer them. I've tried to get around to each of you that had a concern and voiced a question prior to this presentation, uh, but I will yield at this time, Mr. Speaker, for anyone who would like to ask a question. You have some questions. Do you yield? Yes, sir. Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Carter to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, I do. Is it not true that this bill um, offers no expansion of powers under this law that aren't already available under current law? Yes, it is. Is it not further true that it simply brings the BUI in line with the DUI by moving it to point, from point one to point oh eight? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Do you further yield? Yes, sir. Chair recognizes the Majority Caucus Whip, Representative Lindsay to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes, sir, Mr. Whip. First off, thank you very much for bringing this important bill. Let me turn your attention to page three of the bill, lines uh, 63 and 60 to 65. There's been some questions. And I just want to ask you a couple of questions to, uh, to clarify. Uh, underneath this bill, underneath, in that particular section, it deals with the uh, informed consent that must be read to a suspect uh, who's, who's, who's suspected of being uh, hunting without a license, or rather hunting while intoxicated, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And, and the concern is whether or not there is the authority to immediately revoke a hunting license if someone refuses uh, the test. You've heard that question that's been raised? Yes, sir, I have. Yeah. Is it not true that underneath uh, Georgia law 2714, uh, the Board of Nat Department of Natural Resources has the inherent authority to set rules and regulations regarding uh, safe hunting practices. Yes. Is it not also true that under 27225, the uh, commissioner has the power to revoke a hunting license for up to two years uh, if someone violates the rules and regulations of the Department of Natural Resources regarding safe hunting practices? Under current law, yes. Is it not also true that as part of this bill, the Department of Natural Resources Board uh, intends to promulgate specific rules and regulations within its inherent authority uh, to, uh, to state that if someone uh, refuses a breathalyzer test, uh, that their license can be immediately suspended? Yes. So therefore, we're not enlarging any power here. We're simply making sure that those of us who practice uh, hunting uh, will do so in a safe manner to both ourselves and to others around us. Yes, that's correct. Thank Finally, you is it not true that by passage of this bill, we will be saving lives in the state of Georgia? That is very true. Thank you for bringing Thank you. Up. Thank you, Mr. Whip. Do you yield for further questions? Yes, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Tanner to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. 
Uh, isn't it true that over the past several months that a group of representatives and senators from the Lake Lanier area uh, held numerous meetings uh, where the public was invited, uh, including the Lake Lanier Homeowners Association? Uh, we had two, I believe, public hearings uh, on this issue, and much of the legislation that's before us today came as a result of that public input we received from the uh, boat owners in North Georgia. Is that true? Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. Yes, sir. You uh, continue to have questions if you care to yield. Mr. Speaker, I believe uh, we've answered a bunch of questions, and at this time I'm going to yield the well, and uh, I appreciate it. Gentleman has yielded the well. Chair recognizes Representative Coomer to speak to the bill. Representative Coomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this bill, and I wanted to had a few points of clarification uh, from questions that I've I had and have had answered adequately. Uh, first of all, I want to address the uh, the licensing requirement. Uh, a, a very well placed question came uh, from a member just a moment ago about what other states require who surround Georgia, and I've confirmed that every state that borders Georgia has a boating license requirement. Uh, that means all of the states, not one exception. Um, and um, so we're not, uh, we're not creating a restriction that would impede people from other states from being able to come into Georgia and drive their boats um, because they should already have the license from their home state when they come to Georgia. Uh, furthermore, uh, in conversation with the commissioner this morning, I understood, I learned that it, was the, it is the policy of DNR uh, that the law of licensure of the state where the boat puts into the water is what applies. And that's how DNR addresses these issues. So if somebody puts their boat in on Lake Hartwell and they come in on the South Carolina side, uh, if they're stopped and an inspection is done, South Carolina law of licensure is going to apply and uh, they're not going to be subject to a Georgia licensure requirement. Conversely, if that same South Carolina boater drives across the bridge and puts in on the Georgia side, um, but he has a South Carolina license, which is required under South Carolina law, then he will also uh, not be ticketed because his out-of-state license will be recognized by Georgia DNR. So uh, these issues of, of crossing the state line, uh, while they are uh, certainly legitimate concerns, are concerns that uh, do not apply in this case because the other states are already requiring these licenses, all of the border states. So nobody's going to accidentally drive across the state line on the lake and get uh, inadvertently caught up in a licensing problem. The second issue I want to address um, is to uh, tag on to uh, the WIPs, uh, Whip Lindsay's uh, questions about the implied consent statement. It is imperative to understand that the implied consent statement which is section three of the bill, uh, is the, that is the statement that a law enforcement officer must read to a suspect uh, after arrest uh, in order to obtain that suspect's consent to give blood, breath, urine, or other bodily fluids for testing for a BUI, HUI, or DUI. And in this case, where we're talking about HUI, uh, as Representative Lindsay said, the commissioner already has the power to revoke hunting licenses for, uh, uh, for a very um, broad array of reasons. Um, the current stated policy of the DNR commissioner is that every person who refuses to submit to a breath test uh, on a DUI investigation for hunting, or excuse me, HUI investigation, is suspended for two years. That's the current policy of the department at this time. That is not changed by this bill. What the bill does is gives the correct advisement to a suspect who's been stopped for an HUI investigation. The, the current language in the bill, what we're, what we're striking out, is an incorrect statement of the current policy status of the state. The DNR uh, commissioner has that stated policy. He's in the process of putting forward uh, a, a more robust uh, more fully vetted uh, written policy, which will bring uh, its policy in line with the DUI uh, regulations in this state. 
and uh, we're not changing the authority of the commissioner. The, that authority is already set out in code. Uh, we're simply putting in Section 3 an appropriate and correct legal statement of the current state of law in Georgia as it exists today. Ms. Speaker, I would yield for a question or two. You have some questions. Uh, do you yield? I do, yes, sir. Chair recognizes um, Representative Atwood to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Certainly. Bringing your attention to line 63, uh, under current Georgia law, and I've had, I was very concerned about this section. I have had some discussions with some of the law enforcement folks, which has, has modified my concern somewhat. Uh, under current Georgia law, before you read an implied consent warning, the first, there must be probable cause to arrest the person. Is that same standard here? Because I didn't see it. Well, actually, you have to have a reasonable, articulable suspicion to have a, a tier one interaction, and then you have to have something more uh, a, 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 akin to probable cause to have that tier two interaction and ask, and then you actually arrest the person before you ask them to consent. That's correct. And, and that, under constitutional, under my understanding of the Constitution of the United States and the state of Georgia, you can't get to that implied consent question until you have probable cause for an arrest. So this does not change, uh, we don't have authority to change that constitutional guarantee. So before we, uh, a person would have these rights read to them and then for, uh, suffer the possibility of losing his or her license, they would, the, the officer would have to have at least a level of probable cause to arrest before it's read. That's right. They're essentially, this is a part of the arrest process. They, they say, you're under arrest. I have probable cause to believe you're Fill in the blank. You're under arrest, and then they're going to read the rest of the, of the implied consent statement. Thank you very much. Will the gentleman yield for one additional yes, sir. question? Yes, uh, And under, I would assume, but I want to be sure I'm not assuming, that any regulations promulgated by DNR would essentially be subject to the Administrative Procedures Act. We'd have review of those, wouldn't we? That is correct. And uh, in addition, there is already in statute a process for appealing decisions of the DNR commissioner uh, that affect a person's licensure in the state of Georgia. I will add, uh, in my conversation with the commissioner, uh, he has suspended one hunting license in the last 12 months. Thank you, and that was for a habitual violator, nighttime hunter, uh, who was belligerent in his decisions to violate the safety uh, provisions of, of the code. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do you further yield? I will. Chair recognizes uh, Representative Gregory to your right for a question. Thank you. Um, does the gentleman yield? Sure, yes. Um, you may or may not know I'm a father of uh, three young children, all three under the age of 12. I want to know if um, you do or, not, do or do not believe that my wife and I are uniquely and better suited to decide when my children should wear a life jacket than the other people in this room? I believe in the fundamental uh, right of parents for the determination of the rearing of their children. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Gentleman has yielded the well. No one else had signed up to speak. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on Senate Bill 136? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. The chairman of the committee is recognized for the chairman's time. Chairman Burns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a good bill. It provides public safety for the citizens of our state and those who visit our state as we uh, utilize the waters of our state and, and the hunting privileges. I think the, uh, the current law and, and new provisions are, have been very well explained, and I appreciate those who have taken the well to do that. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to yield my time to the Governor's Floor Leader, Representative Nimmer. Chair recognizes Representative Nimmer, the Governor's Floor Leader, for the balance of the Chairman's time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Speaker. I'm, I'm going to make one brief comment and statement, if I may. We do a lot of things up here, and we, we make a lot of decisions, and often we say these are some of the most important. There, there's been concerns about existing law and existing statute that's out there. This bill has nothing to do with what's current and existing. This bill has something to do with making our waterways safer, our hunting land safer, 
And, and I want to bring your attention under section 1, line 19. Upon the passage of this bill, this act will be known as and may be cited as the Kyle Glover Boat Education Law and also cited as the Jake and Griffin Prince BUI Law. I'm going to ask you to think about the families of those that we're naming these bills after. Think about the other Georgians and visitors to this state that we have the responsibility to protect when you cast your vote. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to yield the well and I'm going to ask the House to favorably consider this bill, Senate Bill 136. Thank you. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee? which was favorable to the passage of the bill. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of Senate Bill 136 will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machines. All members voted. Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of Senate Bill 136. The ayes are 146, the nays are 17. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. We have other business to get to. We're going to now recognize a distinguished group of guests. The chair recognizes Representative Hitchens for a invite resolution. Representative Hitchens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate it. Oh, you did get this on. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the ladies and gentlemen of the House. Uh, today I have a special group, and in the now famous words of one of my boyhood heroes, uh, Yogi Berra. This is deja vu all over again for me. As a member of this organization uh, since 1969, I've served on the executive board, served two years as the president, and I also received one of these awards that I'm gonna speak about today uh, many years ago. But we have today uh, the leadership of the Peace Officer Association of Georgia, one of the oldest and the largest group of law enforcement officers in the state. The president's here with us today, Major Steve Adams with the uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources. The uh, Vice President, Trooper Kyle Sapp from the Georgia State Patrol. And we have uh, the Secretary Treasurer, John Edwards, who's a retired special agent in charge of the GBI in Statesboro. But the reason we're here today is every year the Peace Officer Association uh, selects a Peace Officer of the Year for Valor and a Peace Officer of the Year for Meritorious Service. Uh, one of the things that I remember the most as president of this organization was how many good nominations we had every year and how difficult it was to select somebody for this award. I saw some of them this year. I, uh, I noted one it was about a 15 mile shooting incident where they were running down the road shooting back and forth at each other. But uh, the individual who won the Valor Award this year did something very special and that's Deputy James Ross of the Coweta County Sheriff's Department. He was called to an accident. It was a head on collision with an SUV and when he arrived at the scene the uh, the compartment of the vehicle was completely engulfed in flames. He pulled out his fire extinguisher and tried to suppress it as best he could, but he was unsuccessful. So he went around to the passenger side, he crawled into the vehicle, he burned his hands and his arms and his face in the process and was able to extricate the, uh, the lady and, and save her life. So I would uh, I'd like to recognize Deputy James Ross at this time.
And I, and I neglected to, to recognize a longtime friend who's his boss, uh, Sheriff Mike Yeager from the uh, Coweta County Sheriff's Department and Colonel Kinsey, who's the Chief of the Patrol Division for, for Coweta County. Say a few words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can't tell you what an honor uh, it is to be standing in front of you today. I'm very humbled. Um, I want to thank the Peace Officers Association of Georgia for giving me this prestigious award. I want to thank Sheriff Mike Yeager and Lieutenant Colonel Kinsey for the training that prepared me uh, for this, uh, this event on September 10th. Um, I also want to thank the men and women in law enforcement because I know had they been in my shoes that day, they would have done the same thing and, and helped this motorist. So thank you guys very much. Good job, man. The recipient for the Meritorious Service Award couldn't be with us today, but it's Dr. Archie Rainey. Many of you know him. He's a professor at Columbus State uh, University, and they, uh, about 15 years ago, he put together a program for in-service law enforcement that allowed them to have academic training beyond uh, what the law enforcement community can typically, uh, typically receive. And uh, it's led, in many cases, to uh, pro the professionalization of the law enforcement community. Many people received their undergraduate degree. And at least one member of this house that I'm aware of received their graduate degree from Columbus State University as a result of this program. So uh, please remember Dr. Rainey.
ครับผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่าผมบอกว่
Chair recognizes Representative Rogers to explain his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is a very simple little change. Uh, House Bill 255 was a change to the uh, official code related to uh, Department of uh, Motor Carriers. Uh, this bill placed uh, complete control under the Department of Public Safety, moving uh, one section from the Department of Revenue to Public Safety. Uh, the Senate made one quick change in the thing. In order to accommodate revenue's budget this year, they moved the effective date from July 1st, uh, 2013 to July 1st, 2014. Revenue, Public Safety, and, and the Governor have all signed off on that. And if there's uh, no questions, I'd ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. on the um, gentleman's motion that this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 255. All those in favor of the motion to vote yes and those opposed to vote no and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the gentleman's motion. The ayes are 162, the nays are zero. The House has agreed to the Senate substitute House Bill 255. What purpose does Representative Hitchens rise? Make a motion. State your motion. I move that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended so that the bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Hitchens, 161st, bill to be entitled Act Amendment Act, an act to buy a new charter city of Rincon. On the uh, motion of the gentleman that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended, to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. For what purpose does the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee rise? Make a motion. State your motion. I move that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow for a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Chanel, the 120th bill be entitled Act Amendment Act Create Establish Green County Airport Authority. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to al allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. Chair recognizes Representative Ramsey for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House disagree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 487. Representative Ramsey has moved that the House disagree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 487. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 487 by, by Representative Ramsey, 72nd. Bill will be entitled at men title 16 related offenses against public health and morals to correct cross-reference to clarify the application of certain provisions to the Georgia lottery. The House passed version of House Bill 487. Committee substitute is printed. In your grade, disagree. Folders, upper right hand corner, LC 343808ERECS. The Senate Pass Substitute or Senate Pass Version of 487 is all, also in your agree, disagree. Folders, upper right hand corner, HB 487 CSFA slash 2. Senate Substitute Agreement by the House will constitute final passage of the bill in this, or disagreement will send the bill back to the Senate. 
Chair recognizes Representative Ramsey to explain the Senate substitute and his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We, we just need to keep the ball moving on this bill towards conference. There was a, an amendment added in the Senate, which is, from a constitutionality standpoint, is questionable. They put a, a, a dedication of fees, which, as we all know, requires a constitutional amendment. There's a question as to whether or not if it's allowed because it's going to the lottery or not, but we're working with legislative counsel to address that. In addition, the Attorney General has asked, asked for another change to the bill, a technical change, and we also want to put in place a hard deadline for the, the monitoring system, which is really the tent pole of the whole bill, uh, we want to put a hard deadline in place, uh, and we want to do so in conference and work all those issues out. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. On the gentleman's motion, the House disagree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 487. Is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered, and the House has disagreed to the Senate substitute to House Bill 487. What purpose does the speaker pro tem rise? Make a motion, Mr. State speaker. State your motion. I move that uh, the rules of the House be temporarily suspended so that a bill may be read for the first time assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Jones, 47th, will be in Thailand. To amend an act creating one or more community improvement districts in unincorporated Fulton County. On the motion of the lady that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. The chair recognizes. Chairman Smith, the chair of the Natural Resources and Environment Committee, to make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House agrees to the Senate substitute to House Bill 234 as amended by the House. Chairman Smith has moved that this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 234 as amended by this House. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 234 by Representative Smith of 70th Bill being entitled Act and Title 13 related contracts. So it was enacted a new chapter to provide for notice of automatic renewal of provisions and service contracts. The House passed version, House Bill 234, together with the Senate substitute to House Bill 234, are printed in your agreed disagree folders, together with the amendment offered by Chairman Smith of 70th. Upper right hand corner on the amendment, AM 40063. Representative Smith, the 70th, offers the following amendment. Amend the s substitute, House Bill 234, House HB 234 slash SCSFA slash 2. That's the Senate passed version. The amendment offered by Representative Smith, the 70th, is printed in your agree disagree folders together with the versions of the bill. Chair recognizes Chairman Smith to explain her motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 234 deals with contracts with consumers. It creates a new chapter for notice of automatic renewal provisions in service contracts. At my request, three changes were made in the Senate. Two more exceptions were added. You'll find those on lines 55, 56, through 57. The first one, line 55, Chapter 45, Title 40, 43, deals with pest control. They are regulated elsewhere in our code section by the Department of Agriculture. Lines 56, 57 was at the request of local governments. And then the third change is to add the word natural in front of line 19, which leads to my amendment. House Bill 234 protects consumers, which was originally defined broadly as persons and which normally includes corporations. To narrow the types of entities protected, the Senate redefined consumers, at my request, to mean only natural persons. However, the new definition of consumer, natural persons, made it so the provision of House Bill 234 would not apply to nonprofit organizations that may enter into service contracts. If you'll remember, a concern by a church of mine in my district led to the generation of this bill in the first place. 
So to make sure these entities weren't excluded, we added language specifically including nonprofits as part of the definition of consumer. To state it another way, this amendment means that the protections offered by House Bill 234 will apply to nonprofits entering into service contracts as well as natural persons entering into service contracts for personal purposes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the lady's motion that this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 234 as amended by this House, all those in favor of the motion to vote yes, those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the lady's motion, the ayes are 164, the nays are two. This House has agreed to the Senate substitute to House Bill 234 as amended by this House. What purpose does Chairman Neal rise? To make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I move that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Neal, the second bill to be in time lack. To amend an act to change the method of filling vacancies on the board of the hospital authority, Walker Day, Catoosa Counties. On the motion of the chairman that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Kelly rise? Mr. Speaker, I'd ask that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended so that two bills can be read for the first time. We have to do them one at a time. One of them then. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we'll get to the other one too. One at a time. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Kelly of the 16th, the Bill of anti lac Act creating Polk County Water Authority. On the motion of the representative that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. Now, what purpose does Representative Kelly rise? Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make a motion that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended for the second bill that I have before us today. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Kelly the 16th, the Bill of Entire Act, the Men Act creating Board of Elections, Registration, Polk County. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended, to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. And both bill number one and bill number two by Representative Kelly are assigned to intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Dukes rise? To make a motion, Mr. State Speaker. your motion. I move that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow for a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to a committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Dukes, 154th, Bill of Entire Act, Minute Act, providing joint county municipal board of registration elections, Darty County, City of Albany. 
On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Chairman Jacobs rise? To make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I move that the, ha the rules of the House be temporarily suspended so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Jacobs, the 8th Bill of Entitled Act, Middle Act, Incorporated City of Brookhaven, Cab County. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Gregory rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to make a motion. State to, your motion. Uh, to temporarily suspend the rules so that a bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Gregory, 34th Bill of the Entitled Act, might provide a new charter city of Kennesaw. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Wilkerson rise? To make the first of two motions, Mr. Speaker. All right. State your motion. I would like to uh, temporarily suspend the rules of the House so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to a committee. Clerk will read the caption. A bill by Representative Wilkerson, 38. The bill of being entitled Act, Act creating new charter city of Powder Springs. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. What purpose does Re Representative Wilkerson rise again? To make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion again. I would like to move that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to a committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill be a bill by Representative Wilkerson, 38th. The bill be entitled at midnight creating new charge city of Powder Springs. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Both bills will be assigned to intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Geising arise? To make a motion, Mr. State, Speaker. State your motion. I ask that the House suspend the rules so that a motion to be made. Is it a motion to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee? It is. Clerk will read the caption. A resolution by Representative Guy Singer of the 48, a resolution creating the House Study Committee on the Equine Industry. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a resolution to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Regulated industries. What purpose does Chairman Pruitt rise? Mr. Speaker, I'd uh, make a motion, please. State your motion. Uh, make a motion the rules be suspended for temporarily to allow the bill to be read for the first time. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Pruitt, 149th Bill of the Entitled Act, provide membership Dodge County Eastman Development Authority. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does represent or Chairman Pruitt rise again? Mr. Chairman, I mean, Mr. Speaker, I ask that the Make a motion, please. State your motion. Rules be suspended temporarily to allow a bill to be read for the first time and signed to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Pruitt, 149th. The bill being entitled Act Midnight Create the Heart of Georgia Regional Airport Authority. On the motion of Chairman Pruitt that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, 
Is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Chokas rise? To make a motion, sir. State your motion. I move that the House temporarily suspend the rules so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Chokas, 138th Bill of Empire Lightman Code Sections 15, 9, 60, 15, 10, 80, relating to calls for probate court, courts and filing fees, service and process calls, writs of various facious fee, calls tax to the losing party. On the motion of Representative Chokas that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered judiciary. What purpose does Chairman Earhart rise? Make a motion. State your motion. If the rules be temporarily suspended so a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Earhart, 36, Bill of Entire Land Amendment Act, create the Cobb Judicial Circuit. On the motion of the chairman that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Mitchell rise? To make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I, too, move that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended so that a bill can be read and then assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. A bill by Representative Mitchell, the 88th Bill of Being Tied Act, Men Act, providing a settlement compensating expenses, allowance, Judge Superior Court, Stone Mountain Judicial, sir. On the motion of the representative that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. Intergovernmental coordination. What purpose does Representative Dutton rise? Make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I'd like to suspend the rules for a bill to be read for the first time in a Senate. Clerk will read the caption. Bill by Representative Dunn, 157, the bill being tied like created at New Charter City of Glenville. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered. On that last bill, intergovernmental coordination. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. These first six resolutions are invitation resolutions. They're being read for the first time today and referred to the Committee on Rules. The resolution represent Dempsey of 13, commending Mr. Gardner Wright, inviting him to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Resolution represent Martin of 49, congratulating Mrs. Sandra Cawley, Mrs. Georgia, United States, 2013, inviting her to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Resolution represent Kidd of the 145th. Resolution committing Willie Julian Bill Ussery Jr., inviting him to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Resolution representative Rice, the 95th, recognized commending Norcross High School girls basketball team and inviting them to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Resolution representative Rice, the 95th, congratulating the Norcross Blue Devil Boys basketball team on their 2013 Class 6A state championship and inviting them to be recognized by the House of Representatives. And resolution representative Rawls, the 7th, honoring the memory of Mr. Dick Pettis, expressing regret at his passing 
designating a portrait commissioned by members of the House of Representatives to be split, displayed in the Coverdale Legislative Office building in his honor and inviting members of his family to be recognized by the House of Representatives. As aforesaid, the foregoing resolutions or invitation resolutions being read for the first time today for the Committee on Rules. Following resolutions are privileged resolutions being read for the first time today for adoption. Resolution for Representative Dickerson of the 113th. Recognize Commanding Chairwoman Catherine G. Morgan on her outstanding accomplishments. Resolution for Representative Lumsden of the 12th. Congratulating the Trine High School Competition Cheerleading Team on their Class A Public Cheerleading Championship win. The resolution for Representative Meadows of the 5th. Recognize Committee Alec Garen McGaskey. Resolution for Representative Ralston of the 7th. Committee the House Interns 2013 Regular Session. Resolution for Representative Thomas, 56. Recognize Committee Mr. Lionel Daniels. Resolution for Representative Thomas, 56. Recognize Committee Gab Gabrielle Douglas. Resolution for Representative Allison of the 8th. Committee Towns County Lay Indians Cross Country Team on Significant Achievements. A resolution for Representative Williamson, 115th. Recognize Committee Capital Commission. Pastor Ron J. Belkey and other purposes. Resolution representing Stover, the 71st, committing Dr. Bob Heberlin, Association of Middle Level Educators, Educations, 2012-2013, National Distinguished Educator of the Year. Resolution representing Flood, 64th, recognizes committing Mike Cheryl Cater, 25 years of service, house parents at Christian City Home for Children. Resolution representing Parents, 158, recognizes committing Mr. Richard McNeely. Resolution representing Tanner of the Ninth, Congratulations, Dawson High School Lady Tigers basketball team, excellent performance, Class 3A state championship game, and a resolution for Representative Wade, so 60th, recognized commending June Wood on the occasion of her retirement through the privilege resolution. Is there objection to the adoption of the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, the resolutions are adopted. All right, we have a number of members who have signed up for announcements. What purpose does Chairman Dollar rise? Ask that the rules of the House be suspended so the bill can be read and signed. Clerk will read the caption. A bill by Representative Parsons, 44th Bill to be entitled Act Amendment Act Consolidating Office Tax Collector, Tax Receiver, Office Tax Commissioner, Cobb County. On the motion of the gentleman that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none. It is so ordered intergovernmental coordination.
All right, we're ready for announcements. If you signed up for an announcement, and also if you have pages here today, we're going to be doing page photographs at the rostrum immediately upon adjournment. Chair recognizes Chairman Chanel for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is a series of announcements for subcommittees meeting today of the Ways and Means Committee. All of the meetings will be in 133 of the Capitol. First at 1 o'clock uh, is a, a subcommittee on public finance and policy. Again at 1 o'clock and 133 of the Capitol. Uh, the subcommittee on sales tax will meet at 130 and 133 of the Capitol. The subcommittee on income tax will meet at 2 o'clock and 133 of the Capitol. The subcommittee on tax reform will meet today at 3 p.m. and 133 of the Capitol. And finally, the Abbott Law subcommittee will meet at 3.30 and 133 of the Capitol. Chair recognizes Chairman Benton for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Committee of uh, Human Relations and Agents will meet this afternoon at 3 o'clock, CLOB 515. Chair recognizes Chairman Carter for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The General Government Subcommittee of Governmental Affairs will meet today at 2 o'clock in room 514, CLOB. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Kaiser for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For those of you who are here from the Atlanta area, from 1.30 to 3.30 today in room 216, um, the kids from Atlanta Charter Neighborhood Schools will be in the room uh, with parents, board members. So if you'd like to come and buy, there are students from all over the city of Atlanta who attend this school. So from 1.30 to 2.30 in room 216 of the Capitol. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Yates for an announcement. There'll be a meeting of the Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee in room 415 CLOB at 3 o'clock. This will, no bills be taken up. This is our annual time when, when the uh, people across the street, uh, Commissioner Wheeler and his two assistants will tell us how to help, help veterans. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Ramsey for an announcement. And looks like it's joined by Representative Howard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, last week, you got a letter on your desk from Representative Howard and I announcing the formation of a joint House and Senate Diabetes Caucus. Today, upon adjournment, we're having our kickoff lunch uh, down in room 125 of the Capitol. And if having lunch with Representative Howard and I is not good enough to get you there, Dominique Wilkins, our state diabetes ambassador, is going to be there and would uh, love, to, love to meet all of you and tell you a little bit about what we're doing as a state and what we need to do as a state to deal with the problem of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Clark, Representative Valerie Clark for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen who are in Education Innovations, we have a, a subcommittee meeting at 1 p.m. and 515 CLOB. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Shaw for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, Rural Caucus is meeting today. Uh, immediately upon adjournment, we're going to have a lunch sponsored by the Rural Health Association. And uh, we're meeting over at the Department of Ag, but we're in a different room today. We are in the Georgia Grown uh, Kitchen Room, so we're not in 201, but uh, immediately upon adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Riley for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Environmental Quality Subcommittee of Natural Resources and Environment Committee is meeting at 4 p.m. today in 403 of the Capitol. Thank you. Chair recognizes um, Representative Flood for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like the members to pay attention and draw your attention to a, an incident that was quite unfortunate that happened yesterday to one of our members. On yesterday afternoon, Representative Patty Bentley suffered a, a severe uh, fire damage at her home. Um, the home was not totally destroyed, but there was a great deal of uh, smoke damage. 
she and the family are doing fairly well, but as you can imagine, uh, after such a, um, a, a very difficult event, she is uh, um, bringing herself together. She actually, uh, in true Patty Bentley fashion, will be here tomorrow because she has a group that was already scheduled to be at the Capitol, and she's going to come back tomorrow and spend uh, the day with us. But want to make sure that you uh, please keep Representative Bentley in your prayers. Uh, she and her family are going through this uh, very difficult time. Representative uh, Williams is actually uh, going to be headed down uh, past her home this afternoon, and uh, she's not asked anyone to, uh, to do anything, but if you would be so inclined as to um, consider um, any kind of uh, support contribution, that would certainly be appreciated by the family, I'm sure. And, and if you want to do that, uh, please see Representative Williams uh, before he leaves this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Sims for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, okay, this was the last day. Turn out the lights, the party's over, okay, for your local bills. But you need to go over and tell those jokers in the Senate that you've got to get these things out. So please be reminded that if you've got bills, local bills in the Senate, you need to go over there and once they get over there and make sure that they're signed and get them out because uh, without that, you won't get them passed. Just a reminder. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I Chair recognizes Chairman Neal for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. State Properties Committee will meet at 3 o'clock today in room 403. State Properties at 3 o'clock today in room 403. Chair recognizes Chairman Rogers for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, the higher education meeting scheduled for 3 o'clock today will be canceled. We will not meet today at 3. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Rice for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, how, full House Motor Vehicles Committee will meet at uh, 2 o'clock and 5.06. Two bills should be pretty quick. Chair recognizes Representative Braddock for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Women's Caucus is going to meet up on adjournment in 514 CLOB, so if you can, I'd love for you to come and have lunch with us. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Cooper for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, House Health and Human Services Committee Committee will meet this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and it will be in CLOB uh, room 606. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Knight for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To all those who RSVP'd for today's uh, the Sportsman's Caucus event, the Skeet Shoot, thank you. If you haven't and you want to come, please let me or uh, RSVP to Scott Tanner. And again, that's tonight, uh, and we will start promptly at 6. And again, it's at the Tom Lowe Shooting Grounds, formerly Wolf Creek Shooting Grounds, uh, right off of Camp Creek Parkway. Thanks. That completes our announcements. The chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move this House now stand in recess until 5 p.m. today, at which time we shall adjourn until 10 a.m. Thursday morning, March 21st, 2013. The majority leader has moved that this House be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today, at which time we will stand adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. Tomorrow, Thursday, March 21. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. This House will be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today, at which time we will be adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. Thursday, March 21st.